one thing I love about the show is Michael's impressions. I've been, you know, trying to nail some of them down myself because I just think they're so funny. I was just wondering if uh, there might be, or it would be totally kick-ass if there were any, like a super cut of all the, the best of Michael Brooks impressions. I mean, I, I'm sure Michael has uh, like m- numerous ru- uh, uh, reels at home of that. Uh... I actually don't. I really should. <laughs> He'll find someone to make it for him. I will- we'll picture a nation of Islam Obama and a meeting of different terrorist factions in the Middle East. And he says, uh, look, some people think that we only need to uh, target suicide bombings at Shia. Other people think that Sunnis who aren't on the righteous path should be a victim of suicide bombings as well. But look, we can all agree that we need to have more suicide bombings. We can all get together behind a common goal of restoring a caliphate. And if we don't listen to each other, then the infidels and the great Satan are going to beat us. We need to take a pause uh, and think more about our commonalities. And when, uh, when we blow up a Shia mosque, we see the results of that. Just shocking news. And um... All right, look, Joe, uh, you're one of the good ones, okay? <laughs> Let me just say that right up front, all right? So I tolerate you, and uh, Hillary's not going to be president. None of these Republicans are going to be president. We all know the long-term master plan. I guess you don't because you're sort of like the help around here. But uh, let me explain to you how it's going to work. One term for you. You get to run around, obviously. uh, Me and uh, Skip Gates and Cornell West will still control things behind the scenes. (laughs) Two years in, Minister Farrakhan's on the Supreme Court. Don't don't, don't ask me how that's going to happen. It's just going to happen. All right? Then... He named Deval Patrick, or as I remember him, Kwame, my classmate, (laughs) at Kinshasa Grammar School. That's right. That's in the Congo. People don't even know this. It goes so deep. (laughs) So that's the plan. Can you get on board with that, Whitey? And uh, there you go. All right. Say it after me, Joe. (laughs) Allah Wakbar. Oh, and by the way, tell Maureen Dow that your son wanted you to run for president. (laughs) Remember how he was saying he wanted you to stop and smell the roses? You got to just be like, what was well, that you said? What'd you say, son? That's Joe saying, I'm sorry, did you say Rose Garden? You want me in the Rose Garden? Okay. All right. Let's, I um, like that kid. Exploit his memory. Let's go on. I just want to degrade the white man. So. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. We don't want. Uh, hello? Rise and shine, little devil. This is Barack Obama. How did you get this line, Mr. President? Never mind, little bitch. You got mail. Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, the little swine that created Facebook. It's a pleasure to talk to you. How are you? You bring community together? You're helping white people sex to each other in a different platform today? Yes. Uh, Look, uh, Mark, uh, you you know as well as I do that I I tend to try to leave the devil's business to his own if you all want to kill each other over facebook that's fine it's my job to teach the black man his true nature and keep him off of that platform and get him onto world star baby world star but look you and i both know that white people are very gullible and uh, and stupid so i was very troubled uh to find that you had said with regards to fake news which is why we have of course the true devil that you're afraid of i don't care about trump can be president of for all you white people, for all day, for all I care. But I know you're scared about it. You wanted Hillary. But yet you said just the other day in the paper that the idea that fake news was part of the election, fake news on Facebook, was crazy. What the fuck do you mean by that, Mark? I go over there and slap you upside the head? In retrospect, uh, you know, we are trying to manage this issue. That wasn't the best way for me to put it. But, you know, uh, we're trying to simultaneously give people a voice and, and also you know, make people heard. Yeah, give give people a voice. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great, Mark. Look, look, Mark. Let me explain something to you. If a black man who has been historically disenfranchised believes that the AIDS was created by the CIA, what what do you call that, Mark? Uh, I, I I have not come across the that. truth because it was created by the motherfucking CIA and the white man. Now, white devils. What do they do all day during election season? They send around memes with fake quotes by popes around about sex at pizza parlors and some true ones about my Islamic faith. 
But you got my point, Mark. Do you think white people are gullible? I think this is a huge problem on, on a global scale that I think can be addressed. Hey, look, Mark, you have a responsibility to your people, and I do mean your people, to not spread these news stories. White people can't handle it. Their brains are filled with mayonnaise and putty and American cheese. I'm going to tell them that Hillary's a lesbian with Huma Abedin. They're all going to believe it. Maybe that one's true, but you, you take my point. Like we are being proactive on this, and we, we hope to reconcile. Uh, uh, Deep down, you know by letting you run a little private NSA data mining operation that you're winning a whole entire war on the white devil better than the prophet Elijah Muhammad ever did. So at the very least, you could keep them from believing fake meme quotes and fake Morgan Freeman quotes. The fuck is the matter with you, Mark? Uh, good to be with you, Sam. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, look, uh, look. Here's what we're doing with regard to uh, guns. We're, mm -hmm. we're imposing a series of uh, sensible measures that everyone can uh, get behind. Greater uh, scrutiny, background checks, greater accountability on the system. I, I think that there's no reason why reasonable people across the divide can't all agree with this. Psych? <laughs> I'm sorry, psych? Uh, psych? You hear that beautiful music in the background, Sam? I do. You hear that gorgeous call to prayer mm -hmm. of my faith, the Islamic faith, the one and truly only faith of God, the one and truly only faith of Allah? Here's what I'm really doing with the guns. Yeah. White people, I'm about to take all your guns. I'm coming for you. The fruit of Islam is ready. We're locked and loaded and ready to bear, baby. <laughs> no more guns. White people are going to have to pray to the only true and living God, the black God of Allah. And bow ties for everybody. You ready for this? Oh, so everybody's got to wear bow ties. And are you saying that um, basically you're outlying guns, but just for white people? Just for white people. See, that's what people got to twist it. Remember I said I respect gun laws? I'm going to over-respect gun laws when it comes to black people. I see what you're saying. Yeah, there's tiered systems. Arabs and black people get a lot of guns. Iranian people get the most guns because Iran, obviously, favorite right. country of the world. Uh, Hispanic people are sort of in the middle, so they'll get some uh, and then there's a tier system within the Hispanic. Mexicans, more guns. Puerto Ricans, more guns. Cubans, less guns. <laughs> Fuck them. Uh, white people, you don't want to make a grand total of how many guns you get? Uh, yeah. Zero. Zero you guns. You got nothing. For white people. All it's right. just the, the greatest joy of my life to watch those pale, disgusting, pasty faces fall into complete and utter desolate sadness as I take away not only their guns, but their culture and their hopes and dreams. I hate the white man. He's of the devil. He was made in a cave in the worst parts of Europe, produced from the lowest forms of humanity. And I'm so glad to bring him back to his proper state, enslaved to now, the black man. Now, hold on for one second. Well, on. No, stop, stop the music. Let me just Don't ask stop this. that me, music. Hold, I'm hold, president, hold, baby. Hold on. What? Let me All just right. Can you really do that via executive action? Uh, I can do that via uh, super Islamo action, which is something you don't even know about. I didn't realize that. I didn't know. That Every time I make a public signing statement, there is a secret Quran on the podium. Oh. And that is Allah's law, which supersedes our law. I mean, really, to be honest with you, it's really Iranian law. <laughs> Full on Iranian law. Right? Yeah. You know, the irony is, is that Donald Trump's right. We did negotiate a bad deal with the Iranians from your perspective. I see. From my perspective, it's fantastic. So basically, uh, part of that the whole nuke thing was that we now follow Iranian law. Where's Salman Rushdie at? <laughs> someone needs to get, <laughs> someone needs to pay the price for blasphemy around here. All right, let's final see. year, psych. <laughs> Just getting started, Sultan of Penis, baby. Okay, well, we're all right, well, Allah Akbar. Yes, well, thank you, I appreciate that. No, that he paints sperm everywhere. Um, and the word is him and Obama are really good friends. Uh, so here's a my giant buddy. sperm swimming across the president's head. Say there's sperm all over the painting. But why is sperm satanic and globalist? Because everybody has sperm? or I can't explain that to you, but I can't say this. Michelle was supposed to be beheading Laura Bush, and I wasn't supposed to have a money shot on my forehead. <laughs> The uh, fuck is the matter with you? The sperm in my understanding is that uh, he took this down later and blamed it all on rogue staffers. Rogue staffers again, huh? <laughs> rogue Fake staffers, news. your own rogue cognitive breakdown, huh? Who did the old.
the president's got sperm on his forehead. Now, all right, Candy, this is a big one. Now, this need is a lot uh, of sperm on my forehead. Now, of course, wow, that's. I wish it were that subversive. Is that? I mean, is it subversive? I had to fake take face uh, shots from Dick Durbin in order to get into the Senate. <laughs> Chronicles my career. <laughs> <laughs> it was the night before Christmas when through the White House not a creature was stirring but the ghost uh, of Millhouse. The senior staff nestled, all snug in their beds. Dreams of a politically correct Christmas danced in their heads. I put on my robe and donned my skull cap to check one last time on my Santa Claus trap. When in the North Lawn there arose such a clatter and I knew it one man, no one thinner or fatter. Michelle's cookies and milk must have done the trick. So I had finally captured dear old Nick. He came to his senses, and I walked up to his cage, and he bellowed and rattled and shook with great rage. Tell me the meaning of this Christmas night ploy. Do you wish to rob the children of their God-given toys? I replied to him calmly, uh, let me be clear. No harm will come to you or your flying reindeer. I know you have millions of presents to give, but Christmas has become much too uh, offensive. So now I told uh, old Kringle how the world is today and how it's no more Merry Christmas, it's Happy Holiday. How being PC means no religious expression and how each candy cane is a microaggression. He stroked his long beard and sat in a deep silence as I told him how Christians must atone for their violence. When I finished, he made not a movement or a steer and I saw no expression through his thick facial fur. When suddenly he jumped, gee golly, you're right. Who knew it was so wrong to be Christian and white? We must fix this terrible holiday misfortune. What we need is a plan B, a Christmas abortion. PC virtues prevailed, our causes aligned, and I offered to join him to lead from behind. We rode off on his sleigh, worked all the way through the night to end once and for all this Christmas day plight. We took Nick's presents, left Christmas trees bare, and replaced Christmas carols with quotes from Voltaire. We changed a manger scene into a public safe spaces and removed all cheer from coffee shop places. By the end, I was tired, sore, and frostbitten, but a Christmas story was finally rewritten. With our work done, I cannot wait to see all the children wake up with Christmasless glee. I bid sweet farewell, my social justice ally, and with that he took off, vanished into the sky. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy holidays to all, and to all a good night. I don't say the words birth certificate. Somebody said it. I didn't say it. Say, so, Sam, when, you, when you're deep uh, cover as a terrorist and you're orchestrating all this from the inside out, and remember, this is a long process. Change doesn't happen overnight. We're gradually destroying white America, gradually destroying Christian America. I can go to churches. I can eat pork. I can do everything I need to do to be in character, as it were. But what I cannot do is use the phrase radical Islamic terrorism. <laughs> That is part of this special Sharia contract that I signed in Malaysia, not Indonesia, Malaysia, after I was flown out of Kenya as part of a secret process that began in the 1940s to become president. You know, let me tell you something, Sam. Later on the show, we're going to talk about an article where you're called a quote-unquote dumb Jew. And let me just be the first to say, I would call you a devilish Jew, a Jew who will be beheaded. A Jew who deserves to uh, suffer the hellfire of Shaitan's reign. Mm. Absolutely. Shaitan's reign. But dumb? Not entirely. <laughs> right. Not exactly Harvard Law. You wouldn't be in the sharpest madrasa class, but you're not an idiot. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Well, La Akbar. Yes. By the way, when you see Donald Trump out there, doesn't a little part of you think that America deserves to be taken over by jihadists? <laughs> Keeping it 100. All right. Well, I appreciate that. That's very 100. Hello. Uh, hello. This is uh, Barack Obama. Oh, well, this is the British spying place. Uh, British spying place. Great to talk with you again. I'm going to have the usual, uh, which is a wiretap on some white people. Right out, governor. I'm going to need a wiretap on Donald Trump and right. every white person making above $100,000 a year in the panhandle, or as we call it, Malik Shabazz Allah. Uh which will be renamed after the caliphate is established. A white people, panhandle, right. And how would you like that delivered, sir? <laughs> I'm going to want that written up in a transcript so that there's deniability. Right. 
Deniability transcript right away. You've got it, sir. You know, Donald Trump is the perfect embodiment of the white devil and his devilish nature, but you are quite the opposite, British spy people. Thank right. you so much. Right out. Have a wonderful day. Allah Akbar. And actually, get it's more It's not enough to hate the white man. You need to know how to take, him, take over his businesses, throw him out of his homes, right. defile his daughters, right. and destroy his religion. Right. We can stand here and we can listen to Brand Nubian, and we can listen to the brother minister preach. But if we don't burn down Whitey's home, we don't terrorize Whitey on the street, then we're not going to have the results that we uh, fundamentally want to see. That's right. A so, lot of walk park. So the idea is just to, don't just be um, uh, passionate, but actually get out there and do stuff that's don't really going to be Don't just be talking really about be how upset. Whitey controls the vaccine supply in your dorm room. <laughs> get out on the street. Burn down the home. Car jack a car. In L.A. in 1992, they didn't sit back and bemoan what happened to Rodney King. They burned down the yellow man's laundry mats. That's what we need to do today. Hmm. We have gone a little, a little far. I don't know why we don't have video of that part of the speech, but. <laughs> Hillary, first, you're going to eventually kill some people. You know it. I know it. The American people know it. But after you do, it's imperative now. You drag the body to the park. It's the only way it works. They know about the deal I got, that deal I got with Pablo Escobar up there in Medellin. And what we're going to do is we're going to get them involved in that raid on the religious cult and take them all out. And then we're going to drag their bodies Wait a to the park. <laughs> I'm literally drunk with power. So, uh, uh, just Sam, I would like to interject some more thoughts about the pyramid, mm. if, uh, if I may. Please. Uh, and also supplementation. But first, I'd like to share a joke about archaeologists. <laughs> Now, hold on. So yeah, let me just get this straight. Um, yeah. We have Dr. Ben Carson with us now. That's uh, correct. Reiterating um, and expanding on his comments that um, that the archaeologists who think that the pyramids were built as some type of shrine and uh, mausoleum, I guess, is the word. For, <laughs> to the pharaohs. For the, for I mean, pharaohs. It was just, okay. All right. I so mean, go ahead. Really, you know, I'm a brain surgeon, so I look at these things a little bit differently. Right. Uh, what's the difference between an archaeologist and a unicorn? I don't know. Nothing. They're both fictional characters. <laughs> Uh, in a sense, it doesn't, it doesn't exactly work, but the point is I substitute archaeologists or Polacks in Polish jokes because they're universally regarded as some of the dumbest people. So wait a second. So you're encounter. saying that the archaeologists are, are, are either, either fantastical, that they don't even exist, or they're stupid, and why that's why the, they think that... Now, what, how do you explain... Let me, well, excuse me for one second. Uh, okay, how do you explain... Media. Right. Liberal media, I know this is. A, I didn't get interrupt the, him with hostility because I'm a free thinking black man. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Let me ask you: How do you explain these uh, these mummies and these caskets that, uh, in fact, just the uh, I don't know two miles from here uh, up Flatbush Avenue, we have uh, we have in the the Brooklyn Museum. We have some actual uh, mummies. Uh, now you're saying that well, they weren't, they're, they're fake, or what's going on with them? Well, well, first of all, let me, let me say, why did the archaeologist put ice in his condom to keep the swelling down? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me <laughs> All right, I think, well, I think listen, I think it's, I'm, just, I'm not, I crack we're not going to allow, we're not going to allow, a good one. we're not going to allow this to be <laughs> a forum a to malign archaeologists. If you have a comment, uh, Dr. Reverend Ben Carson. start a joke by looking over his shoulder? Uh, anyways, um, let me, let me get to, you had asked about the mummy in the Brooklyn Museum, uh, dismissively of my theory about the grain pyramids. And what I believe is that God had put grain inside the pyramid for uh, the Pharaoh to contemplate and eat and look at. Because obviously, if the pyramids were made, they would be for a big thing. It wouldn't be to build the Pharaoh. That would be a relatively small part 
of Egyptian society, obviously. <laughs> so what we think of as mummies are really just the equivalent of like bags of rice that you buy at the supermarket. They're wrapped up in cloth and they're really just grain bags. And that's what you would see at the Brooklyn Museum, according to my understanding. Now, if you go to Princeton or Harvard or Yale, or MIT, they'll tell you that alien beings created those mummies. <laughs> but uh, I think I have a different opinion. What are the details of your education policy? No, just stop, stop. See, this is, this is the thing. This is what you did. Did you, did you hear yourself? Yeah, I did, actually. I'm actually wearing headphones. Right, because you're proud of yourself and your secular humanist arrogance, and you're going to run roughshod over it. So that if I say, as an example, there's a company called Gentech that I do not have a financial interest in that produces an analolic acid that will cure diabetes in three days, according to my own research, you'll question whether or not I am right to say that as an American. And that's how we're going to become like Cuba. <laughs> well, we didn't get to the Cuba thing yet. Yeah, we got no, to we'll get to that. And, uh, and as far as West Point goes, I wasn't uh, at the dinner with General Westmoreland happened later. First, I was, I was approached by agents Mulder and Scully, <laughs> and they asked me if I wanted to work on a top secret government program a lot of people really think they're aliens, but really it's about the truth of the pyramids and how that secretly controls a one world government, which is controlled by a communist cabal of people who practice yogi, yoga <laughs> in lower uh, Manhattan. But that's something that you probably wouldn't want to know about because you think you have all the answers. You think that you're so arrogant. <laughs> you're I'm sorry, so you say I think I'm so arrogant. <laughs> You think that you think I think that I'm so arrogant that you have all the answers. <laughs> it was so much more fun when I was telling archaeology jokes. All right, we're did gonna... you know that I beat Michael Jordan in basketball? I did not know <laughs> that. Through the power of prayer, <laughs> Andre Agassi asked me to be his tennis coach, and I said no because I was going to be Roger Federer's tennis coach because I knew he was coming later. And you could question that and be arrogant and continue to harm the country. Or you could just stop. A lot of people around here trying to pretend like they love the country. <laughs> well, all they've been doing is hating it. Deceitful, lying liberal media. And we all know that their transgender bathrooms are making kids addicted to crack. I was the only one with the courage to say this. Oh. Uh. I'm not a business man. I am a business man. I'm multiple levels like Manatech, Bioduck, like old nutrients, and they'll send me checks. Cause I'm blessed, cause I'm blessed by God. This is why the media calls me a fraud. Just stop. Just stop. Boy, I'll stab you like I stabbed my friend when he turned down my tune and hit his belt buckle. So I ran to the bathroom. When I got there, I heard God in my head. So I locked the door, and here's what he said Joseph built pyramids to store the grain because the pharaohs had trouble making it rain. As president, this is what you need to explain. The first to take the scalpel to their liberal media brains. To their liberal media brains. That's who I was before I found the divine light. Became a neurosurgeon. I was the type of dude that would attack my mama with a hammer and set, the, set her on fire before I found God. One time I suffocated one of my relatives until 10 people pulled me off of him and people trying to pretend like that a lie. They're trying to act like my whole backstory was Rick Ross and he was a prison security guard except this is all real. This ain't no Rick Ross. They can hate but I'm gonna love what I love and that's this country. <laughs> <laughs> I had a 4.0 at West Point. <laughs> That's all I have to say. And why have you not asked one 
Barack Obama about his best friend Osama bin Laden. Oh, we just let that all. Oh, he killed him. Okay, supposedly he killed Osama bin Laden. We just let that go. But then all of a sudden, hold you on, wait ask a second, wait a second, time. wait a no, second. No, no, I'm oh. not going to take it anymore. I'm going to finish a sentence. No, I'll wait a second. But I beat Kobe Dr. Bryant Dr. in Dr. one Reverend on one. Carson, let me ask you yeah. this: Are you suggesting? That the only difference between you and your friend and Osama bin Laden and Barack Obama is that when B uh, Obama stabbed him, it didn't hit his belt. Is that what you're basically saying? I mean, well, you can infer what you you can infer what you want to infer, but I think people are tired of the games that are being played, and I'm not going to let these games be played anymore. When I reverse dunked on Walt Chamberlain. That was the truth of Walt? my story. And if you Walt? want to look him up... Uh, Walt then, Chamberlain? Don't... Do yes, really Walt mean? Chamberlain was a cousin of mine <laughs> who is deceased. And he taught Wilt Chamberlain how to play basketball. And I'm tired... I'm not going to take it anymore. No one asked Barack Obama how he passed calculus at high school in, in Hawaii. No one asked Barack Obama... Why him and Saddam Hussein gave each other back rubs in the 1980s? <laughs> no one asked Barack Obama why him and Mullah Omar created the Taliban together. <laughs> no one asked any of these questions. But yet you come at me every day because of the passage about and when I said I didn't want to win Wimbledon so Roger Federer could have that. So I let him win. Empathetic human beings react to such things. Why well, take the candy from me when there's a baby over there in a stroller, <laughs> perfectly votable? I mean, use logic. You know, I'm a brain surgeon, so I would say go to the cash register. Oh, I'm yeah. a surgeon. She's a single mother trying to survive, <laughs> working three jobs. Isn't that the more obvious person to stick up? That's right. You could take my bank cards, but there's cash money right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of the whole brain surgery thing, have you heard that tabloids are reporting, and he was asked about this today, which is hilarious, Tabloids are reporting that he left a sponge in one of his patients' heads when he was performing brain surgery. And he was asked about it specifically to, to comment on it. And he goes, well, when you perform as many surgeries as I have, you're bound to find five or six disgruntled people. I mean, you know, uh, look. I... He, didn't, he refused to deny that that occurred. Oh, that's true. You're bound to find disgruntled people. But it would have been funnier if he said. Look, I forget my keys in places. I... Yeah. <laughs> You're bound to find a sponge at some point. Right. I think that sponge was planted by the adversary. <laughs> <laughs> really bizarre stuff. Bizarre stuff. Tell me how you want it, whatever way you like. You want kids dead, <laughs> want them alive, I could do it for you. You just, you just give me the orders. What I would like, though, is I would like to have copies of Gifted Hands dropped on the children after they're bombed by the munitions as well. A little bit of pain, a little, little bit of pleasure. A little bit of pain, a little bit of pleasure, and then they could see how them dying fits into the larger narrative arc of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think they'll feel better. See, I'm much more soft-spoken, but I am actually truly the biggest megalomaniac on the stage. Besides Carly Fiorina, she's the, actually scary. In other words, I think what Ben Carson's saying is the upshot is, yes, I may kill these children. But they will make it into my memoir. And they might even have different names. They might even have well, inflated not accomplishments. Not specifically. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> just watch what you're doing. But seriously, you, I would kill you right now just to watch the blood leave your body and the life leave your eyes. I mean, I really am not that sentimental about these things. <laughs> One woman who was seduced on an F train in New York City by a young Ben Carson who approached her and said, hey, baby, where you at? What's the matter? You're not going to let me holler at you for a second? Oh, and, your name's Candy? Hey, oh, your name's Candy? Mm, you sure are fine like Candy. Fine. Let me take you to... <laughs> <laughs> let me take you to candy shop. You see how I did that? That was a 50 cent reference. God talks to me personally, just so you know. That's how I roll. So what's up? You're not going to let me holler at you? We could go steal some food from homeless kids or something. Or just go to Popeye's. Sometimes when it gets robbed, 
You can leave without paying the tab. Think about that Here's and what you'll make the right choice. Uh, first of all, give me a break. Hey, man, I'm better than you. Oh, look at that. I'm better than you. I'm better than everyone. You know, 30 years ago, no one would have ever thought that there would be a black president. Look at how far we have fallen. 30 years ago, I used to have my own section at a counter and not have to be forced to be integrated. Look at how far... I'm confusing the timelines. Liberals love to point out timelines because they're elitists. <laughs> ben Carson... He's pushing that break where it's like, what more can I do with that character three, that he's not doing himself? <laughs> three give me a breaks in 90 seconds. I mean, give me a break. It reminds me of the time that I told a robber at a chicken place to go to the counter. I was like, give me a break. Why do you want my wallet when you could rob the whole store? That was cash money. Why are you driving away with my car? Give me a break. Why are you driving away with my car? Give that me, belt buckle me, stops nice too easily. Give me a break. With give me that. a break. Give me a break. <laughs> You obviously know I wasn't going to kill you. You have a belt buckle on. Hold on. I have to go talk to God. I can't figure out how to... And now, what Maoist Bernie was thinking during Monday night's CNN debate over Obamacare. Oh, my God. He's really going to do it again. Lindsey Graham is going to try to say that some fucking Republican governor cares more about your health than anyone else. I can't fucking believe it. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, I love Medicare, take a breath, take a breath. I wonder how Bill Cassidy would make out in a gulag. On one hand, he seems totally weak, effeminate, and totally pathetic, but he might be able to hustle his way into some type of bread exchange situation or something. Lindsay probably wouldn't last a day. Oh God, I can't wait till we can force these people to tap maple up in Vermont. Jesus Christ, oh me, it's my turn. Do you support reimporting drugs from Canada? Uh, and help the I appreciate and that Amy Klobuchar is, is next to me for people. the value There's of optics, but my God, she is the type of liberal uh, accommodationist right now, that is going to get us all murdered. And that was what Maoist Bernie was thinking. Fundamentally, power is never ceded. That is a bourgeoisie lie that has been told through uh, Christ to Gandhi. It's a distortion of the revolutionary nature of history. And as Mao himself once said, change comes from a barrel of the gun. So, so it is time to march forward. It is time to forget one's individual identity and merge into a collective of revolutionary fervor and strength. Now look, you know, we're not Cambodia, but there's a lot we can learn from the Khmer Rouge. <laughs> we're not China, but there's a lot we can learn from Mao. We're not North Korea, but there is a lot we could learn from how that family's put that country together. <laughs> With who these African, African Americans? Men, well, Afri it that's yes, yes, African Americans. Yes, go to Chicago, I'm Zaire. Sorry. You I'm will discover quickly what I am talking. I'm about. sorry. Did I say that out loud? Did I say black Africans? The black Africans because who must be managed in Rhodesia yes. by a great leader like <laughs> Ian Smith. Oh. Am I oh, on no. mic? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, my. Pardon me. That's what I said. B African, black African Americans. Black Africans. The black. soul of darkness, of so blackness in black. Chicago. With their black skin and their Did black Did I mention their black, black eyes. They're black. They're black. They're blackity, 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 black, black, black. And legislation got, won't work. Legislation won't help with the blacks. Black unless Africans. you could legislate basketball instead of shooting. We've got to have Anyone? African basketball. African basketball, so they can play with each other by the bushel instead of shoot each other by the bushel. <laughs> Go to by Chicago, Congo. Go to Chicago, Congo. The facts speak oh, for themselves. I'm sorry. I thought this was Sinclair Media. I thought no, this was... all of a sudden it's bad for me to say Oh, black I thought Africans. apparently I triggered the lady mm. on the panel. I thought this was Snowflake? Sinclair, not Oberlin. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Is this the type of distinction that maybe my wife also made when she was a research <laughs> assistant for a prominent Holocaust? And I, I don't know. You tell me. I literally got my PhD at a diploma mill, so I can't really make category distinctions like this. Oh, you mean the Jewy Jews or the not so Jewy mm -hmm. Jews? Until, oh, you want to get rid of usury laws. You want to protect the Consumer Financial Protection Agency, and you don't want to put rules around the Jewy Jew, Jew American Jews? 
Reed Merchant of Venice. I read the Cliffs Notes. It's really absolutely appalling. Yes, African American. Right, African Americans. Right, right. By the bushel. But they're sold black. From Chicago. I want to remind you, they're, they're black. black. Black, black. So black. You know who did more to fight black on black crime than anyone else? Ian Smith in Rhodesia. You want to look at someone who really cared about protecting the blacks from themselves. Blackity black, 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 black. Steve wow. made that point. I didn't even know who even Smith was until Steve told me. Yeah, Steve's what do you so make of cool. me? <laughs> we have turned it up to 11. So when we look over at uh, North Korea, which is like a four at best. <laughs> we established We're all of these 11. parameters very clearly and mm. succinctly at the mar lago Summit. Yes, at the mar lago Summit, we, did, we took a hyperpower meter and plugged it into the earth. <laughs> we found that we're an 11 on the hyperpower. Stephen Miller has the highest hyperpower level that you can have on a personal energy rating of an 8.5. My God, I hope the Chiron says hyperpower <laughs> so I can get this in the propaganda document. I have been winning the Chiron war the whole time, which is why I wasn't fired. These fools Ooh. around me have no understanding of how it works. Ask me what phase four is. What is phase four? When my m wife's parents finally kick the bucket, that entire inheritance just comes rolling in. I have you have ever two seen mustangs. a double-decker Mustang? <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's phase five. Mm, right? Mm. I'm rolling the on play. The pajama boy is over. The <laughs> pajama boy is like war criminal generals and other... <laughs> lifetime members of the military industrial complex who are such pussies that they won't act on the real instincts of the president as articulated the Mar-a-Lago summit. We came out of the Mar-a-Lago summit yes. with very high hopes. <laughs> I still think Mar-a-Lago summit is the best thing I've ever heard. Because there are literally stories of like, yeah, I was at Goldman and I had to go to a thing at Mar-a-Lago and Trump like told me that I had that he had like a completely unbelievable golf score as in it was literally physical impossible that he could have that that happened at Mar-a-Lago you, you mean the you mean, mean the Mar-a-Lago Mar -Lago declaration you mean the Mar <laughs> <laughs> you mean the Mar-a-Lago accord <laughs> the Mar-a-Lago declaration which showed uh, <laughs> President Trump with a 69 <laughs> You mean when he reverse dunked four, on some black guy, birdies. proving once again that basketball is also a sport of the white race? That so liberal conspiracy that LeBron and As Curry and laid Michael out in the Jordan are better. Four birdies <laughs> in the rain. Democrats <laughs> line, Henry. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to try and establish uh, some ground rules. Uh, I'd like to be allowed to uh, make my comments without interruption by Sebastian, uh, because these clever right-wingers, they have a way of interrupting you. Mm. Is that a black African with phone access? Hmm. Why aren't you calling to complain about what's happening in Chicago where the black Africans are running rapid? I'm really surprised he didn't do that, actually. Are you black, caller? Why are you not concerned about what's happening in Chicago, which is daily carnage and Sharia, where Africans are shooting each other by the bushel full? Nothing could be. The president doesn't have a racist bone in his body, and he doesn't have an extra bone like you. <laughs> Uh, which we've talked about. This is my Chinese court scholar meets Nazi uniform. The very alpha. Very, very alpha. Turtlenecks are so alpha. Turtlenecks are what brings Richard Spencer to you in a bathroom stall in Minnesota. Mm. <laughs> there's actually a, of America. There's actually a scene uh, in the, uh, the Samantha Bee thing where he is on uh, Fox and Friends cooking. What? There's a cooking scene, and he's like, if you're really a bad boy, you put in, you put in Crisco oil. <laughs> you then, cut the garlic then, thin, yeah, just like Polly did it in Goodfellow. He 
is a leading authority on topics like national security and terrorism, but today he's an expert in your taste buds. Today we are cooking with the Gorkas. You're going to brown the uh, onions in some oil, or you can use, you know, if you're a naughty boy, some Crisco. So gonna, <laughs> naughty boy? Yeah. I like Crisco. So the origin story of Right Wing Medela, for people new to the show, to the Michael Brooks show, is this. A couple of years ago, when Nelson Mandela, who really sort of kind of like last unequivocal heroes that we sort of had on earth passed away. Um, we were in the office and the first joke was that uh, uh, Chris Matthews had been begging Obama to get, give him an interview and Mandela passed away. And so they preempted his interview. So it was sort of like Mandela being like, ha ha, Chris, you got cocked. And then, and that was sort of funny and whatever. Honestly, just probably joking around because it was so depressing, to be honest. It was quite depressing for me. Uh, and then Mark, uh, Rick Santorum went on Bill O'Reilly and compared the struggle against Obamacare to the struggle against apartheid, which still is up there in a Donald Trump world as one of the most obscenely stupid things I've ever heard in my life. But it did give birth to, Rick is quite right. We were struggling against subsidized health care for mine workers in the African uh, mines. So that is the origin for those that have been asking me. Police can uh, decide whether or not to ban fracking in New York State. Right. I was curious if right-wing Mandela had uh, an opinion on how this is going to destroy New York's economy. All right, well, let's check in. Well, the proof is already all you need. Uh, if you go to New York City, which Bill de Blasio has run entirely into the ground <laughs> through a combination of socialist, Islamic, lesbian policies that he and his wife have implemented, and this is merely the next step. You will see the type of poverty that only President Obama could dream of in his fondest wishes by destroying the oil and gas industry and the American economy as a whole, and this is what New York wishes. This is what they will do, and we will fight back as great patriots and Tea Party activists. But there is a long road to hoe uh, in New York State and uh, city under this horrible socialist leadership. Now, isn't there an opportunity, though, right-wing Mandela, to perhaps just directly put things like uh, benzatine and all these other, like diesel fuel and all these other uh, chemicals, just directly into our reservoir? We'd still be, have the opportunity to ruin... Uh, our water supply. This is obviously many proposals such as this worth considering. Uh, and look, if your propose, if your reservoir makes you sick, you use another reservoir and the market will react and correct itself quite <laughs> rightly. Uh, but look, I have been in many struggles. Some I have lost. I worked very hard to keep the Springboks team all white. Uh, there was many things that I have worked on throughout the course of my career. And uh, we will continue the struggle to allow uh, companies to dump whatever they will like in the wells and water of New York. And uh, the struggle continues. <laughs> there, so, you go, there you go, Tom. I was going to say, so, so the end goal is just uh, turn, every, turn every company into Occidental and just every part of New York State into Love Canal. Or I Virginia, detect sarcasm, but obviously, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How does the right-wing Mandela feel about this Hobby Lobby case? Quickly. The Hobby Lobby <laughs> should maintain the right as a private and cooperated person, as Mitt Romney has said. What is a corporation if not people, people? <laughs> to live their religious values as such and not pay for the sexual activity of amoral young ladies. <laughs> Hello, this is Right Wing Mandela. You have come to rely on my voice of sanity and patriotism and political commentary on the majority report with Samantha Sita. But now I want to talk to you about something that does not involve estrogen-filled men, and that is Trump winery in Charlottesville, Virginia. It is a tremendous fucking winery for clean people with pristine taste. There aren't good people on both sides of this debate. Only losers who can't get in and winners who are drinking the best fucking wine imaginable. Hear from some satisfied customers. Oh, hi, this is uh, Steve Minucci. Uh, I, I got so fucked up, okay? I was here negotiating the purchase of my latest wife 
I got so fucked up on this wine. It makes you literally forget that anti-Semitism exists, okay? Hi, this is Ben Carson. This wine has the highest micronutrient density of anything available outside of beetroot. Now, in the visual of this ad, you can see bottles, people placing bottles in different places, a warehouse, green bottles, which are very godlike. Uh, this is uh, Jeb Bush, and uh, I've had my uh, uh, political differences with, with uh, 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 Donald Trump, but I don't endorse a lot, but I sure do endorse uh, uh, Tr Trump wineries. Uh, is that what you want me to say, guys? Even Jeb fucking Bush gets it, and he is a total homo loser. But he can pay the admissions fee. Ah, uh, this is Bill Clinton. Yup, I did go to the Trump winery, and I still go when my fucking wife isn't in the house complaining about Russia hacking the election. God, I hate her. Things would have been much worse with her. Give Trump a chance. We need to align with him to defeat the deep state. Bernie would have won. So come to Trump fucking wineries, hotel and event. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just basically that's it. It's like, let's Sam, I am troubled by a lack of seriousness in the GOP field that I see. Really? All of these candidates are true patriots who clearly would like to save America from the destructive liberal socialist tendencies of President Obama. However, I see a lack of seriousness when it comes to foreign policy and family values that is lacking in the field. Really? What is it that you uh, feel is lacking specifically? I think, as I say, a, a measure of seriousness when it came to foreign policy and a willingness to confront the Islamic threat. See, many people don't recognize, Sam, that there is evil in the world. <laughs> no, I think people, yeah. I think that's probably. And I think if you look at my, you don't think that the Republican experience set and skills that I bring to the table. As so I wait continue, a second. Are you suggesting that uh, you, I know, right that, wing Nelson Mandela, are going to run for the Republican primary nomination? I know that liberal hosts like to interrupt and be disrespectful, <laughs> and I will be painted into a corner. Comments I made about Buju Banton being correct about gay people will be distorted. All sorts of things will come my way. But I have received a message from God <laughs> saying that I must run. So God. So is it is today that I am announcing later <laughs> that I will formally create an exploratory committee <laughs> to see if a run could be what this country needs to save it from creeping socialism. Wow. An open border. And terrorists at our front door who do no longer believe in American strength. It is breaking news. Right wing Nelson Mandela has announced that later today he will announce that he's going to announce an exploratory committee. An exploratory, that is correct. Sam, you are quite right to note the fraud. That is rampant across the Tea Party movement, which is why today I am launching, along with several other leading conservatives, Tea Party Patriots, USA Patriots, together act now to save America and the family. Thank you for that addition. That's very important, Matt. What, uh, that what, you, what is the acronym for that? Uh, <laughs> I don't think you remember. FAMSA. <laughs> we'll just call it that. Anyways, in a time of rampant communism, threats to the fundamental American way of life, irregular voting patterns, <laughs> mass migration, and the undoing of the American currency as we sink further and further into debt into the Chinese and terrorists move across the Middle East, we must have true, authentic American patriots acting to save America together today. Stand now. We stand together for America. Honestly, Sam, I get a headache, actually, trying to keep up. With all of the notes that we must hit. But the point is, is I was never on unemployment insurance. <laughs> I never complained about my job in a rock quarry in Robben Island. Like that communist well, socialist fair, you had on yesterday. To be fair, who was paying for your uh, room and board at that time? I, uh, the, the, the reason that I was struggling against the apartheid regime is so they would be so liberal. 
as to pay for room and board of our prisoners. <laughs> okay. My initial objection to the regime was, as I told you, the small allocation of health care in the Bantu stands. <laughs> this is why we created the African National Congress. And this is why we struggle today against Obamacare and the ravages of Kenyan socialism that he is laying on the country. Believe me, I have seen Kenyan socialism firsthand, Sam. <laughs> I don't doubt that it. That place is a hellhole. All right. Well, so uh, go to Tea Party Patriot Act USA <laughs> for families today. Sign up for our newsletter. Also, if you sign up today, there is a special offer for investments on a gold band powder that will give you life extension, ensure your IRA account, and protect your family in the face of inevitable social collapse. Also, Alex Jones secretly works for the communist cabal. I'm very sorry to hear this. And I guess my point is, is we were going to have a joint venture before, but right. he screwed me over by working with Dr. Group. <laughs> and we have our own iodine powder. We have our own Tea Party group. No <laughs> unemployment benefits. We will save America together. And we do not have to slide into the recessive theta male social security fueled debt claps that Sam Cedar and others of his ilk advocate for. Guy's got other issues, too. But I just uh, I thought that was funny. But You know, Sam, when you are a cis, and I should add a real man, Samantha, something you would not know anything about with your extra estrogen levels and Rachel Maddow resemblance. When we have a falling out, what we do is we say, fuck you forever. And then we take to YouTube to describe in great detail. You know, and I would I was like to you, discuss. I was going to ask you about this. Um, yes, go ahead. Right wing Mandela, because I know that, you know, a lot of people have a perspective of you that you are anything but right wing and i can imagine that when you really sort of well really this was just mainstream light, anc politics in the 70s it's just that the party has left me i have not left the party if that makes sense it, it does so I mean, as an example but you know but look first of all winnie still thinks zulus are human she still thinks we should close the border with zambia why do you have to not socialize with her She's an empowered woman. <laughs> but, you know, this is what it is like. Oliver Tambo, he texts me. He says, well, I think, you know, the moment is coming. We want Zulus to be at the council. Okay, fine. We still can't be friends? No. He says, no, okay, fuck you forever. <laughs> Go for our Becky. He texts me. He goes, when you're done with the fascism thing, we can be friends again. Okay, fuck you forever. We used to send each other pictures of barbecues because, you know, no one knows how to barbecue. <laughs> and so he said, I want to send you this picture of this barbecue, but I think that time has come. What time? What time are we talking about? You know, Govan Becky is a big ANC guy, big league communist party ANC. We're in fucking Robben Island together. Okay, what time? Well, I think you know because of what you said about people from Mozambique having AIDS. Okay, fuck you forever. Goodbye. That's how you do it as a real man. And, but I just ask that, why can't you talk to Winnie? <laughs> she still thinks we should let people from Zimbabwe run across the border and give us all diseases like lepers and dogs. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not a racist. <laughs> it's totally unfair. You're, Soros is instigating. You, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just the free speech. I just I want to have an open exchange of ideas, but many do not. I mean, I don't know. Who remember. I have been saying, bomb the oil fields, Bachwar. <laughs> Donald Trump steals his ideas from me, okay? And he's, you know, he's not good at what he does, okay? <laughs> he has a trust fund. I have this, you have Ben Carson, they say you can pray the gay away, but okay. <laughs> Not sure about that when you watch him talk, okay? I'm just saying, but I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. What we will do is we will bomb, we will drop a nuke on Yemen where ISIS isn't even there. <laughs> and we will say, oh my God, this guy is not kidding around. 
And then the oil companies will come in and there will be beautiful water parks for the children <laughs> next to the pipelines. <laughs> so I'm not saying this or anything because I'm a nice guy. I don't need to be doing this. <laughs> I dealt with Winnie for over 20 years. If I can deal with her, <laughs> I think I can deal with the liberal press. For <laughs> pissy, Ken Ham. The creationist, I think they were involved in the uh, uh, Answers in Exodus. I think he's involved in the Creationist Museum. Got very, very touchy. Uh, as did, uh, and I, I really do think this is a real guy. His name is Clutchy McGitterson. As my good friend Clutchy McGitterson has said, you must teach the controversy. If you do not, the onslaught of socialist communism will continue unabated. It's not just you must teach the controversy. Carnival! You carnival. gotta do that, Carnival Cruise Lines! You gotta teach the controversy! What else are you there for? Well, Carnival Cruise ships are well-known homosexuals, <laughs> and we've known this, and there is nothing gayer than evolution. Uh, <laughs> JFK was a homo, too. What <laughs> man talks about the sea like that? I didn't realize I was in one of Sam Cedar's bathhouses. I thought I was listening to a presidential address. And now they're attempting to allure me at sea to give me measles from some Mexican kid. Teach the controversy. Good to know Carnival Cruises is atheist. The next time I want to go on a boat and throw and relieve myself in the ocean and throw discarded lobster carcasses back into the sea, I will not be taking one of their cruises. But if you want to take a cruise that supports America and ensures your financial future, go to PatriotCruises.com now. For Patri a look. Patriot Cruises 1587. That's the way they do it now. They go 665 PatriotCruises.com. You will want to go to sea 30 years from now to save your country, yourself, and your family from President Obama's 30-year 2050 agenda. <laughs> Right. In order to book a seat on this boat, you can give $3,000 up front at a $500,000 value. <laughs> Go to Patriot Cruises 666 slash Patriot.com now. Trump speech. Well, Sam, I think people like to cheer. And it is a very cock perspective to not care about this. The, are you saying that the... the I'm sorry, uh, right-wing Mandela, you're arguing that, that it, it's... It it's is a, a, when ISIS sees Donald Trump being cheered, what are they saying to themselves? The, wow, this guy's getting cheered. So first, you'll come out, you have Ivanka, who's a tremendous piece of ass. <laughs> okay, Donald is saying, this is mine. Melania is like a <laughs> mistress. She's like a guma. She comes out. She does amazing work. It's terrific. Not as hot as Zanani, my daughter, but nonetheless, <laughs> total 10. Then he gets cheered. ISIS will probably disassemble within yeah, about a week after inauguration. That's what we do. We do deals. It makes perfect sense. Right-wing Mandela is ta uh, taking Keystone XL money to infiltrate your show with ads. The Keystone XL pipeline will provide literally thousands of jobs <laughs> while rewarding our strategic allies, including Canada, in a time when President Obama has gone on an epic apology tour, undermining our security <laughs> and power. Nothing could be better than rewarding the workers of America, our allies, and fighting terrorism and Russia than by approving the Keystone Pipeline. <laughs> Let's do this promptly. It makes sense for America. It makes sense for our security. Let's sign this bill. <laughs> do it, President Obama. <laughs> if you have any love for America. Uh, oh my God. The let's sign this bill was too much.